Hello, hackers. Welcome back to Pwn College. Today, we're talking about uh, exploitation scenarios. This is a module that puts together everything we've learned in previous modules um, and applies it. Um, this specifically is a discussion about the use of a memory error to inject shellcode and run shellcode into a, uh, in a program. We've run shellcode in all sorts of different scenarios in module uh, two, uh, and now in uh, and in module five, we did a whole lot of uh, memory error exploration of the impacts of memory errors. Now we're gonna put them together. Um, recall that um, memory errors and the control flow hijack occurs in part because of the mixing of control and information data, right? So uh, when you have um, a program starting up that has code in the text segment uh, section, um, data in the heap and the stack, and uh, there is user controlled or what is attacker controlled when the user is an attacker data that is on the stack uh, interleaved with control information such as return addresses. As you've seen in the previous module, um, things can get dicey. One of the ways that they can get dicey that we're going to explore here um, is when a uh, return address is overwritten and by being overwritten, it ends up redirecting control flow into shellcode. All right. Um, for our example, we're going to recall the motivating example from the shellcoding module. Uh, this was it. It's a simple program with a really dumb bug, actually two bugs. Um, but uh, in the shellcoding context, the bug was that the arguments to this call of hello were mixed up. Instead of um, the function pointer uh, for bifunc, the uh, name was passed in. And so we could directly execute the name as shellcode. Um, these bugs happen, shockingly, but they uh, happen fairly rarely. This uh, takes a lot of ignoring of compiler warnings to, um, to occur. Um, but this program has another bug. And even if we fix the bug that allowed for arbitrary execution of shellcode in the shellcoding module, we still have a problem. And that problem is gets. Um, gets is uh, a uh, function that is always unsafe. And in this case, yeah, it's, it's, it's a uh, typical classic old school buffer overflow um, to the point where the compiler will complain at you if you use gets. But obviously, as you've seen in the previous module, um, these uh, errors can occur quite frequently in a lot of varied um, scenarios where even when developers are actually careful about sizing. Um, so uh, in this case, we have a stack buffer overflow. And of course, as you are well familiar by now, you can override the return address and uh, redirect the execution wherever you want. Of course, this program doesn't have a win function. There's no um, function that allows you to uh, hijack uh, or to, to, to read the flag you have to write it yourself. And of course, that is shellcode uh, injection. All right, um, let's take a look. Um, as a reminder, this is a very simple example. We have a lot of um, um, mitigations disabled with, uh, that's interesting, hold on. Um, let me fix my tech setup here. All right. Um, Let's first uh, take a look. I, of course, wrote this program out here in hello.c. Um, we have uh, the exact thing from the slides with the bug fixed, right? So if you run this, um, let's compile it. I, as I mentioned, I'm turning off a bunch of mitigation. I'm turning on an executable stack. That's where we're gonna inject our shell code. And I'm turning off um, stack canaries you understand what those implications are from the previous modules. Um, but we're gonna start with a very simple example here, talk about how to tackle more complex examples later. Um, and uh, um, we will, and then you will explore a lot of that on, on your own in the practice problems. All right, so we compile this. And as I mentioned, if you use gets, the compiler complains at you, 
right? Of course, there are other ways that these bugs can uh, occur. Um, all right, let's uh, execute it. Um, we put in our uh, a name and then it just says hello and then tells us one of two randomly chosen goodbye functions. All right, awesome. So this is um, the, the program and how do we exploit it? Obviously, if we put in a whole lot of text, it'll crash. Let's take a look at why. Okay, it'll crash at the ret from the main function. And if we look at the stack, it was all written by A's, OX41, and um, that's why it's crashing. All right, um, if you look at the process map, uh, you can see that our stack is executable. Um, uh, here's the process. Let's just take a quick look. Okay, here it is with the permissions. You can see our stack is executable because you compiled it with exact stack. And as you saw, um, there was no canary, no canary triggered to, um, um, you know, kill the pro program before it could return to our overridden return uh, address. Cool. So now we just need to build an exploit. What we're going to do is we're going to overflow the buffer with our return address and um, with uh, uh, overflow the buffer, modify the return address to point into the buffer that we're writing where we'll put shell code. Since that's executable, the shell code will execute and we'll be good to go. We're gonna do this with pwn tools, specifically using um, the pwn debug uh, functionality. Um, and uh, Pwn tools is nice. It allows us to disable SLR. So we're disabling really all mitigations for this basic uh, demo um, so that we can, of course, set the right address so that we know what address to send. Um, so we, we start up. Pwn tools here is, is the program uh, running. Um, first thing we got to do is figure out how far away the return address is from the buffer. We're going to be super lazy and use a cyclic pattern. Um, so we're going to write pwn that cyclic. Of course, it's a 64-bit um, machine, so let's just uh, write 2,000 bytes with eight bytes at a time, so that we can look up with with eight bytes. Um, and gets um, is unsaved because it always reads to the new line. It has no no uh, doesn't care at all about the amount of bytes it's read. Get, gets is an almost guaranteed buffer overflow again, but we need a new line so that it stops reading. All right, we wrote that, boom. Um, segmentation fault, let's see what is the stack got overwritten with, the stack got overwritten with this nonsense. This is part of our cyclic pattern um, for the record. If we generate this pattern, this is the cyclic pattern we overflowed with and of course, this is, um, if we look at RSP in a string, you can see this is part of it, right? And so that this is this in, in little endian. And we can query either one of those. You can do pwn.find cyclic find um, that address n equals eight. That's the, the, the step size of the cyclic pattern. And it's at position 1032. So we have to send 1032 of anything. And then we overflow with the return address. And then um, we uh, can put shellcode after that. Or we could put shellcode before that. But after it's a little easier to calculate offsets on the fly. So we're going to do that here. All right. The final thing is the stack is pointing here when the return occurs. So um, what we're going to do is override the return address with eight bytes past this um, location where our shellcode will be. Um, uh, so let's let's take a look at that. We're going to um, relaunch first of all. 
Okay. Continue here. All right. So here we are. We're going to write uh, 1032 A's. And then we're going to pack uh, P64, of course, takes this plus 8, um, takes this uh, number uh, and converts it to li a little endian uh, string plus our shellcode, right? So this will overwrite the return address with a pointer to eight bytes after the return address, which is where we'll put our shellcode. So when main returns, boom, our shellcode will run. Um, and now we put in the shellcode. I actually already wrote it here. This is just a, a simple open send file shellcode. Here's the results. It reads my fake flag when I run it. Um, and it's right here. Let's just copy this. Oops. Paste it. And our new line. Okay. We write this. Here we see it crashed on illegal instruction. That's promising, probably right after our shellcode. Um, and let's see what happens if we read everything. Ah, boom, terminated. Okay, here we go. It, it, the shellcode ran and it read our flag. So what did we do here? We overflowed the name buffer when gets ran, it overflowed the return address of main. When main returned, it returned onto the stack, which was executable because of the way we compiled it. Modern programs, this is not the case. Um, and we were able to run our shellcode and um, read the flag. Combination of memory corruption and shellcode execution. Awesome. Um, through the rest of the module, we'll uh, look at a couple of other um, uh, concepts around um, these various combinations, and then you will practice them in the practice modules, uh, in the practice problems. Good luck.